Hey, this is Jesse Meng with Anchorage Bed Bug Heaters. We're on to video number four, how to set up your rooms in preparation for heat treatment. A couple of things to keep in mind. You need to be able to get the heat to circulate well in the room. So I've got a couple of heaters, well, a heater and a fan, heater over here, right near the door, and you're gonna have extension cords coming in to power your heater. And then across the room here, along the path where the hot air is being blown, I've got my fan set up so that it circulates around the room a little bit better. One of the things that I've done to prepare here is I've got a window, a rather large window in this room. I need to make sure and get that covered with a blanket so that I don't have a lot of heat loss from this window. Windows are really, really bad for losing heat. So in order to keep this room hot and actually get it to temperature a lot faster, I gotta do things like cover the windows. Uh, another thing that I would need to do in this room is if I had a bed, I would need to pull that away from the wall. Six to eight inches, I wanna be able to get hot air behind the bed and back into the crevices uh, uh, down, especially around these baseboard heaters. Uh, if I had a bed that was resting just on the ground, I need to lift that up somehow. Maybe stick something underneath it to prop it up. So I need to be able to get hot air, especially in a, in a, in a place where I'm gonna find a lot of bed bugs, which is typically bedrooms and especially around the beds. One other thing to potentially keep in mind is if I've got a closet that's completely full of stuff, that's great harborage for a bed bug to hide in. If I've got a really packed closet, I'm also not gonna get a lot of hot air movement through there. So one thing to keep in mind is if I've got a lot of stuff, I need to start pulling some of it out, separate it out around the room to make sure that everything can get up to heat, and I don't have large clumps of things that, that slow the heat transmission down. I'm gonna have a lot of hot air swirling around in this room, but if I got a packed closet, that hot air is just gonna wash kind of over the surface of it. I'm not gonna be able to get it up to heat very easily. If I go into the living room, I'm gonna have to pull out couches, sofas, that kind of thing from away from the walls. It's the same idea. I wanna get that heat to move around. Again, if I've got closets, say in the living room or wherever, I need to get stuff pulled out of that because I wanna make sure I've got good air movement. Good air movement's the key. Getting it up to heat is the key, and then letting it stay at heat, and letting that heat dissipate into the walls, into the carpet, that'll be what kills the eggs that are the big things to be focusing on here. Hey guys, we're just gonna go over a few more issues with uh, getting the setup for the heaters done on your place before you get everything up and running. So some basic questions, if we look up here, what if I've got a lot of stuff in my house? Do I need to take some of it outside? Do I need to get rid of my couch or my bed? Uh, no, you don't. You can keep everything that you've got. Uh, the big key is gonna be to get everything up to temperature in order to be able to kill the bed bug eggs. Killing the nymphs and the adults is the easy part. Those guys die at not very hot temperatures, typically uh, right around the 113 degree range. Killing the eggs requires more heat, uh, and that's where we try and get us up into the mid-120s to 130. So the big key is just going to be make sure everything gets up to heat. You'll be using your uh, little laser pointer uh, temperature to be able to do it. You'll see that later on in the videos. Question number two, what should I get out of my house before I start heating? Good question, because there are a few things. You want to get rid of jewelry, anything that's waxy cosmetics, uh, any aerosols, any sensitive electronics. You don't want to have any of that in your unit when you're heating everything up. Question three, what if my home has sprinklers? Very good question. Don't run the system if you have active sprinklers. You will almost definitely set them off and it's going to flood out your house. You need if you have sprinklers, you need to make sure that they're disabled before you heat your unit. If you can't have them disabled, don't use the system. It's gonna set them off. Number four, what should I do with my electronics? Can I leave my fridge plugged in? Yes. So if you have electronics that are plugged into the wall with a three-prong plug, 
those can stay plugged in over the course of the treatment. If you have a two-prong plug-in, those need to get unplugged. And if it looks like it's a sensitive piece of electronics, you should probably take that out of the unit. Now, that leads to a, a question here about your fridge or if you have a freezer on the inside. These are insulated uh, uh, appliances and it'll be up to you whether or not you want to unplug those or not. If you've got one of the extension cords plugged into an outlet that runs your fridge or a freezer, your fridge and freezer are going to be cycling on and off pretty quickly uh, over the course of the treatment. And what that does, it's going to create extra draw on that breaker. It might cause it to trip. So you may need to use a different breaker if you're going to leave your fridge plugged in. Question five, is this pet safe? It's pet safe from the aspect that it's not poisonous, but you definitely don't want to leave any pets in the unit. You're probably going to be getting it somewhere around the 125 to 135 degree range. We preset our heaters at 135 degrees, and that is not healthy for pets to be at that temperature for very long. Question six, can I leave my brother in the unit? Depends on how much you like your brother. Question seven, how long does it take to kill the bed bugs, and how long do I have to be out of the unit? Once you get it up to heat, which can take anywhere from an hour to an hour and a half, depending on the size of the treatment area, a bedroom might take a little bit less time than maybe a great room, uh, you should leave it at heat for somewhere between six to eight hours before you shut your heaters off and move them to a new treatment area. When you get your units, it's probably a good idea to initially treat the area where you're sleeping. So hit your bedrooms first so that you can move your heaters into, say, the great room and cool your bedrooms down enough so that you can sleep in them that night while leaving your great room to get heated up overnight while you sleep. Uh, let's see, this is question eight. How heavy is the equipment? The heaters themselves are the heaviest pieces of equipment and they weigh about 42 pounds, but they've got real handy little handles. So uh, they are a little heavy to move, uh, but um, they're, they're not impossible. And last question, will this damage my home? No, it won't. Uh, the big thing is gonna be to make sure and take things that could get damaged by the heat, waxes, aerosols, sensitive electronics, pets, that kind of thing out. Most everything else in your home shouldn't be affected by the heat. We're not actually getting it that hot. Uh, 135 degrees, if you're able to make it up to that treatment temperature, shouldn't damage anything structurally about your home, shouldn't damage your major appliances, uh, or really anything. It's not gonna spontaneously combust paper or anything like that. So get your sensitive things out and you should be good to go. We'll be giving you a piece of paper that'll give you the rundown of all the things to make sure you have out of the unit. Okay, that should complete your setup and we'll catch you on the next video.